All right, welcome everybody. Thank you to Teaching Tuesday here at the 420 Fire Maryland Bel Air Hub. Anyone interested in praying us in today? Chris, you want to pray us in? I know you do. Uh, well, of course I do. I just laugh because anytime the question is asked, nobody comes in. Oh, Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity to come together. We thank you for just your presence, your expansion through this hub, your wisdom and your truth that you're going to bring through all these words tonight. And we just thank you, Lord, that you just bring together those that are just hungry and thirsty for your righteousness. We just thank you that you shall fill us. And we just give you all the honor, all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh. I wanted to touch on something tonight that has been going around in my brain a little bit. It's John 3.16. And it's a very, you know, everybody knows that verse, even non-believers know that verse. If you've watched any football NFL game, you've seen the banners and the signs every time somebody kicks a field goal or somebody holding a big sign that says, John 3, 16, and it's for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And I began to think about that. And I began to wonder if maybe that verse had become so familiar that we kind of were starting to gloss over its meaning mm. and what it was saying. And we just are so naturally able to rattle it off and and when we talk to you know maybe someone we're evangelizing to or we want to share the gospel with you know sometimes people will start with that verse and say oh you know it's kind of like the anchor of the whole bible is that god loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son but do, do we really stop and think about what that verse is saying and what I keep going back to is that it says that God not only so loved the world, but he gave. It was a very sacrificial love on both parts. God the Father was willing to sacrifice his only begotten son. And Jesus was willing to basically be the sacrifice and to give his life for us that he also loved us so much and says in uh, earlier in John where he says you know there's no greater love than this that man would give his life for his friends I know that it's probably a rare opportunity that anyone of us would ever be put in a position where we would be called upon to give our life for a friend, but I'm sure that there are people we think of that closely that we would in any instance be willing to lay down our life for our friends. So you think about that verse and I think that God so loved loved that he would give his only son to die on a cross. And Jesus so loved that he was willing to lay down his life for us. And that's so powerful. That is really powerful. And that made me go one step further. And they say, okay, well, we talk about in the Bible, it says love never fails. And in several places in the Bible, it talks about how God is love, and we love because God loved us first. So love is, is a theme throughout the Bible, but I started thinking, but what is love? What is biblical love? Well, how does God define love? And that took me to 1 Corinthians. And the 
famous love chapter that we hear at just about every wedding we go to. But if you look at it from the standpoint of how we should approach love for one another and look at it from the standpoint of God's love for us, it really takes on a whole new dimension, I think. And if you go step by step, um, starting at 1 Corinthians 13, it says, Though I speak with the tongue of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or clanging cymbal. So my words mean nothing. It's just, it's just noise going out into the atmosphere. And although I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could move mountains but have not love, I am nothing. So you think that God, omniscient, omnipotent, nothing is impossible for God. And yet if you took all that away, he still has love. He still is everything. He, if God was not love and you took everything else away, then he would be nothing. Mm. Say that last part again. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. So think about Jesus going to the cross. All the miracles that he worked. He, the lepers, the sinners, the people that the Pharisees and high priests would look down on and say, oh, they're untouchable, they're unlovable, they're sinners, they're unclean. And yet those were the people that Jesus sought. And even though he gave his body to be beaten and spat on and crucified on the cross, it wouldn't profit anyone anything if he didn't have love. And it says, love suffers long and is kind. Well, who here doesn't think God has been long suffering for each one of us. For a long time. Every day we could go before him and say, Father, I'm sorry. I did this, I did that. I had this thought. I said I was short with my coworker, or I was rude to that clerk in the store, or I, you know, flipped off that person who cut me off on the road. We're not perfect. And yet the Lord forgives us 70 times seven. He says, no matter what, all our sins are as far east as from the west, cast into the sea. And he still loves us. He's still there. He's long suffering and willing to stand by, even if we're look at the unbelievers. He doesn't want anyone to perish. He's still willing, long-suffering, to stand and wait for them to answer the Holy Spirit's call and repent. Mm -hmm. All because of his love. This love does not envy. Can anyone picture God being envious of anyone or anything? He's God. He's creator of the universe, everything around us. What could he be envious of? Who could do anything more magnificent than what he has? Even the greatest works of art that we have, he was the inspiration, he was the spark for that artist mm -hmm. to see that statue of David in the marble. Mm -hmm. 
or to paint that sunset. He was still involved. He was still there. So how could he be envious? Love does not parade itself. Don't be like the Pharisees who stand out on the street corner and say, hey, everybody, stop what you're doing and look over here. I'm about to pray. Hey, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm it. That's not God. Jesus gave him, made himself of no reputation and came down here and humbled himself. He wasn't looking to be the center of attention. He didn't stand there and go, hey, everybody, stop what you're doing. Everybody, be in Bethany. At this date and time, I'm going to raise somebody from the dead. You don't want to miss it. <laughs> now, everything. How many times when, when he cured the lepers, what did he say to them? Go present yourselves as according to the law, but don't tell. Don't tell anybody. He wasn't looking to boast what he could accomplish or what he could do. He did it all out of love. He did it all out of compassion. Mm. Love is not puffed up. Does not seek to behave rudely. Think about how many times Jesus probably wanted to reach over and slap one of the apostles alongside the head and say, are you paying any attention? Are you listening to what I'm saying? <laughs> Did he ever lose his temper? Did he ever get rude? Any time you could say, it, but it was righteous when he would tell off the Pharisees, mm -hmm. clear the people out of the temple. But even then, he held back before he let loose. Right? Mm -hmm. It's out of love. Out of love. Does not seek its own, is not provoked, and thinks no evil. Mm. Do you see God in that? Do you see God behave? Can you think of one instance in the Bible where Jesus said, Oh, well, I'm the Son of God, I can restrain scripture in backwards, forwards, sideways, and inside out. I'm going to go hang out in the temple and teach and have everybody go, ooh, look, look at him. Look at the learned one. No. He was this earthly son of a carpenter. He sought out his own. Mm -hmm. He didn't allow himself to be provoked. How many times did they come to try to trap him? Mm -hmm. Moses said it was okay to divorce. What say you? This woman was caught in the act of adultery. She should be stoned. What say you? Mm -hmm. And they would always try to trick him and trap him into saying something they could use to either turn the crowd against him or build their case for why they should get rid of him. Mm. He never took the bait. He knew, he knew this what was coming. He knew what was coming before they showed up. He was ready for him. Thinks no evil. Even with Judas, Judas was about to betray him. Mm. And Jesus still sat at the table and had the Last Supper with him. Still washed his feet. Yeah. Then sit back and say, hey, I know what you're going to do an hour from now. Let me tell you what I think of you. And Judas showed up in the garden. Mm -hmm. Jesus ripped into him. Mm -hmm. No. You know, but he stood there and he took it out of love. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. 
I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the truth. Bears all things. Duh. Here's the one who bore all sins, everyone's sins. Mm -hmm. Even the sins of those who would not accept his gift of salvation. But he still died for everyone. From Adam and Eve down to the last person who's going to be standing before the sun goes out. He died for everyone's sins, not just the ones that, uh, as he prayed in the garden, Father gave to him. Even those he knew would reject him and continue to mock him to this day. He still died for them. He still took on their sins. Was unrecognizable because the ugliness of sin. And why did he do that? He did it out of love. Sacrificial love. Believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. And he endured everything up to dying on the cross. The Father had to endure. Watching his only son go through the agony of dying on the cross, being separated because of sin for the first time ever. I tried so hard back in the 90s, I believe it was. There was a country music song. I don't remember the name of the song. I don't remember who sang it. Because every time I heard it, it would make me cry. So when it would come on the radio, I would change the station. But the song was, there was this child in the hospital bed. He was very sick. And the doctors weren't sure he was going to make it. And the song was the mother sitting at night next to her child's hospital bed, praying. And I'm going to cry now just talking about it. Pray in hell, you know, God, you know, cure my child. I'll take my child. I'll be so heartbroken. I don't know what I would do without my child. And at one point in the end of the song, she says, remember, you lost a son too. And every time I would hear that line, I would think, you know what? You know, what was going on in heaven during the crucifixion? Was God grieving? Was God the Father grieving? For the loss of his son. And like us was he's thinking. But. We're going to meet again in three days. He's going to be resurrected. What what were the angels there saying? You know. Please just say the words so we can go down and put an end to this. Mm -hmm. So I can think. What was happening? And. Is there. A way to equate, sit there and think. You know, I have never lost a child. I've lost my spouse, but I've never lost a child. I can't, in the scope of my experience, imagine a grief harder to bear than losing a child. I can't imagine the heartbreak that accompanies that event. And I can picture Mary at the foot of the cross, his mother, grieving, even though she knew who he was and why he was here. Did God the Father in any way experience any of that emotion watching his son die? I always think about that line from that song. It's like, you know what I'm feeling because remember, you lost a son too. So did they both, were they both enduring all things during that time? 
probably an answer to a question we won't know on this side of the Jordan, but it makes you wonder a little bit. And of course, love never fails. Love never fails. We can always go, no matter what we've done, no matter, you can sit back and say, oh, God won't forgive me because you don't know what I've done in my past. You don't know the hurt I've caused people. You don't know the harm I've done. You don't know the crimes I've committed, the sins I've committed. And the Father and Jesus are sinners saying, my love never fails. My love is always here for you. And it's a free gift. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to go through any rituals. You don't have to make any bargains. Or All you have to do is accept. Just accept. Mm. And it's all done out of love. So that basically... was what I had had rattling around in my brain past week or so that I wanted to share with everyone. If open it to the floor if anyone has any thoughts or questions about any of that, I'd be happy to tell you. Here, here. <laughs> 